Hello my friends, welcome back to the bench. Today we're going to be testing an airbrush. This master airbrush, model G79. But first I'm going to get one or two things out of the way, and that is my neon panel liners. Um, the first wave has been sold out twice. Now we had some trouble with leaking in the first wave, so I requested a better jar, and they told me this jar locks pretty well and has a rubber seal in it, and um, shouldn't have a problem with leaking on these whatsoever, they told me. So we're going to be testing it out. These are a little bit larger at 1.5 ounces or 40 milliliters. So uh, the other ones were 30 and 1 ounce. So these are a little larger. And uh, they come in this little octagon, which is pretty good. The same label fits on the top, the shiny label. Purple, shake well. This is the new purple, which sold out right away. Thanks, guys. Um, four colors are actually sold out currently, and the other ones are about to go. But I replenished the supply today. I got it to Gundam Pros. Um, it's in their hands, and it should be up in the site probably by the time this video airs. And I wanted to answer a quick question. Somebody was asking about painting something with them. Now, these are too thinned out to be painted. It'll just run. And uh, But I did not mention this in my other videos, that I have a, a lineup for my regular Mecha Empire enamels. I have these neons. And uh, these these are thick, and then you can thin them as you want, airbrush them on big parts, or you can brush paint them straight on. Now, I painted the eyes on here because that's what's requested. So let's go ahead and dim this light. Maybe we can see it with just what we have here. See that? How great is that? Now, in the vents here, that's my um, panel liner. And I just had the lines done. But look at the eyes. And it's even more intense if I you know, lower the lights in the room. I'll do that for you now. Hold on, guys. All right, a little darker, a little darker. Check that out. Isn't that awesome? So if you want to brush the eyes in a couple of heavier places that aren't panel lined, that are actually painted, um, you want to go ahead and use my Mecha Empire enamels, my neon lineup. All right, let me hit the lights. It's for your information, those are also sold at Gundam Pros. He has them. I think he has all the colors in stock. You see them right there. The blue doesn't glow like the blue for the panel line. It actually glows in this deep blue, like a velvet. It's pretty cool, actually. But uh, the others glow with the intensity of you've seen. And, uh, anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you guys. Let you know that the new colors have been restocked. And these have uh, always been in stock. And uh, I should have advertised them the first time. But they kind of a complement with the others where you can brush on. And you've seen the difference. with the, Instead of using stickers for the eyes, you can use that. Uh, all right, anyway, on to the test. Now, I wanted to try this out because of how complete the kit really is. Uh, it's a trigger airbrush. Let me grab this. Instructions below, really a basic stuff, how to airbrush and stuff. So I went through it, but it didn't really go through anything as far as details go. Now, you got a trigger airbrush. You have three needles and three nozzles. Isn't that great? It's a .3 millimeter a 0.5 which is in here millimeter and a 0.8 millimeter it's the largest needle I've had I think in the house um, I believe I tested the Kalani one of those had a, a large needle also but anyway it's got a Mac valve where you can adjust the air at the nozzle um, the cap will come off like most and it has the simplified needle system where it's just the big nozzle see it there I'm gonna change them for you guys I'm gonna show you how that's done it comes with the hose and three cup sizes look at this a small, medium, and a large cup. Look at that. I imagine that's because of each needle size. But uh, at least I give you a big one, a big cup for uh, the .8 needle. And we're going to test all three. Now, it's kind of comfortable in your hand. It's not as comfortable as my Grex. I'll tell you right now. I mean, you can tell it's just pretty basic compared to the comfort of this. Get that out of the way. But it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's got a stopper. Where you can adjust the needle, how far back it comes in. And uh, to change the needle, this back part comes off right there. And um, it's plastic, so I guess that keeps the price down. This isn't chrome plated, this is some kind of cheap stamped out metal. But you got to keep the price down. I believe this was under 80 bucks. And to get all three needle sizes and three cups in a trigger airbrush plus the hose is pretty good. Now, if it sprays good, then it's a good bargain. If it isn't, it's not a good bargain. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. We're going to test all three. I'll show you how to change the, the needles out. I'll show you now uh, before we even get going. 
Now the bottom I re request, I request, I re recommend a quick release for the bottom. All right, this is a Hobby Mio and it's got the good flat washer. See it? Not the rounded washer. So that goes on here. If it's good. Now we can use one of these. There we go. And that's it. Now here's your cup sizes. Now the smallest one doesn't have a cap for it. But uh, for most tests, we're going to use this till we get to the big needle. So we're going to use the medium size cup. Let's go ahead and see how that fits in. Oh, fits in good. It's got a nice rubber washer here between the, uh, the nozzle and the body. Not bad. It looks just like my Tamiya, um, which is made by Sparmax. Let me grab that. One second, guys. All right, guys, we're back. Here it is, Sprayworks from Tamiya. It's made by Sparmax. This is a .3. I haven't tested this yet. I just found this some sitting in the warehouse, and it's been there a long time. And I don't think Tamiya even makes this anymore, but I, I wanted it, and I got a decent price on it. I haven't tested it yet because I don't like testing products you guys can't get. I imagine on eBay you can find one. So, there, yeah, yeah, it has the same. Look at that. Now, obviously, this the handle is chromed. I can see already how much better machined it is. It's got cut open here. This is metal on the back. It's pretty much kind of a knockoff of this good one. Now, the Tamiya ones were not cheap. These are almost 200 bucks, I think, retail, or at least 200 Now, the Sparmax ones are not. They're like 100 uh, Just so you guys know, I have a Sparmax coming in to test, too. It's a brand I haven't tested yet. Even though I have this one here, technically it's a Sparmax, but it is a Tamiya. Anyway, that is what I thought of when I saw this one in hopes that it is at least halfway decent as that airbrush. All right, so let's go ahead. We're going to start off with the point three. This is the point eight. Here is the point three. All right, let's match the needle to that. What do we have here? Point three. It's right here. So let's go ahead and grab that needle. And that's eight. Put that closer to here with the eight. Now, it also comes with different attachments for the bottom feed. That's, I guess that's for the crimping type of hose. And what is this? Let's see what this is. Oh, this is for you have that other badger or the posh type hose end. Look at that. It comes with both. And I think you must use this for it. Yep. You just switch it to this. And there you go. So it covers all hose types, even though... It comes with its own hose, which is ready to go. I don't know why they uh, bothered with that, but they did. So I'll get that out in a sec. All right, so it has a wrench. Let's take that out. All right, let's take out this needle. Let's get this out of the way. All right. All right, here we go. Let's take this off of here. All right, here's how we're going to do the needle. Take that out. Pull the needle right out. Now we're going to have to change the nozzle too, so let's come around here. I'm guessing... No, it's going to be the biggest one in. Hold on. It's got to be here. All right. Sinks it, it seats really well with that red washer there. Not bad. Yep, there it is. Check this out. It's got that great needle design that uh, the Badger Patriot has, and uh, my Harder and Steinbeck has. I want to use this. This is great. Instead of having that little tiny needle, uh, which is a little bit of a pain to take off, my GSI Creos has those. It's got the simplified needle, which is great. So we've got to keep this separate. This is the five. This is the five. Now, I should have taken the other one off first. Let's take off the cap here. Hold on, guys. I need to get a better grip. All right, guys. I just had to get this closer to me from behind the camera. I didn't want to hit the camera. But anyway, let's take it all apart. Here's the cap protector. All right. That's universal on all of them, I believe. All right. Here we go. So this part stays no matter what we use. This I imagine is the part that goes so the two main parts are this nozzle that looks like a bullet and the one in between the cap and the main body we're going to keep the main body so let's go in here 
And there you go, 0.3. Make sure you keep these labeled. Now, there's no package for the 0.5, so I'm going to have to make my own for that. But anyway, here's what you do. My light back on here. Sorry, guys, it was dim. All right, that goes on. Oop, doing it backwards. Doing it backwards, guys. We're doing this live. No editing. That goes on here. The main piece right over. You could probably finger tighten this, but let's go ahead and sink it on with the wrench. Oh, yeah, had a little bit of ways to go there. All right, now we're going to go over with the one that came with the point three. Now that's it. We'll put in our, this is universal on all of them. This is the cap protector at the front. And let's get the needle. All right, now we're not going to use that for the five. It's going to mess me up. All right, there it is. Needle point three. Now, I'm going to give you a tip here. These cheap brushes come in with these unpolished. Oh, it's rough, too. It is rough. Not rough, but sticky. Like some kind of shipping. This was to protect the needle. Let's put that back in here. Don't lose the needle. All right. Here's what you got to do. You take this Flitz metal polish. And take a rag. Put a bit in there. That's it. All right, let's cap this off. Where are you, Cap? Tough working behind the camera. i got to change this camera angle so I can go over my head. All right, guys, here we go. We are going to, particularly at the front end of the needle, because, you know, paint's not getting back here. If it is, you're in trouble. Now, let me see if I can get this covered up. Let me show you on a clean part of the rag. All right, we're going to just go in. Now, normally, I would uh, go ahead and look at it. Look at the carbon buildup on that. Normally, I would use my method where I use my uh, Dremel, and I have a polishing wheel, and I will do that later. Um, but this is a good start. This will, this will, uh, I don't like to go like that because you get stabbed without knowing it. Look out, look at the carbon on this thing. All right. Anyway, the difference is going to be tremendous. You can also use, uh, I like to use the Mr. Mr. Clean, the Magic Erasers. Those work good for getting the stuff off. So let's go ahead. And I can see it's shining already, guys. Look at the difference. I mean, if you've seen it earlier, it was hard to see on camera. It was, oh, what a difference. It is just slick. Yeah, it was all coated with something for shipping. Sorry, guys, hit the camera. It, uh, you got to make sure you clean this thing off because it was filthy. Look at that. All right, I'll do that to all of the needles off camera. Um, I'll do the same on all of them to make sure they're all a yeah, big difference. Um, you can also use the uh, needle juice from uh, Badger. And this is a, do this over the rag. This is a good method too. Put a few drops here in the rag. And this is a good practice to get into. It's kind of like, you know, when you guys, uh, they call it seasoning a pan. When you get a new pan, a new nonstick, and you put the oil in it. And cook it with just the oil. The same, same idea, kind of, with this. You can even dry it off, too. It just gets a nice coating. Wow, what a difference. All right, we are ready to go now. All right. Let's make sure that's loose. It is. There it is. Felt right in. All right. All right, we are ready to go. I won't even use the stopper. I'll leave it there. We'll use the stopper for uh, something else. We're going to use it for uh, see how close I can get and get some nice fine lines with this. I hope I can. Anyway, we'll start off with 20 PSI, and here's what we're going to do. In the point three, we'll spray some Tamiya. In the point five, we're going to spray some of my uh, Mecha Empire enamels. This is uh, anodized violet. Aluminum and this is anodized red. So I'll pick one of those as a nice metallic to try in the point five. And in the point eight, we're gonna spray some heavy primer. We use this Steiner Res, one of my favorite primers, an acrylic. And what we'll paint on that is that car. We're gonna paint this car body. We're gonna spray some gray primer on it and see how it does. And uh, even with the point five, maybe we'll test uh, the um, one of these paints on a nice bigger piece of plastic. And, of course, we'll try a spoon. Anyway, guys, 
Let's head over to the bench and see how this Master Airbrush G79 performs. All right, guys, here we are at the Pace Spray Booth. We are equipped with my moisture trap here. Um, it's been performing pretty good. This is an Iwata, and uh, I like it. It's good. Now, this has a handle, but the ones that don't, it would be up here, and it forms its own handle, so to speak. Now, we're going to start with the MAC valve open, see if that does anything. I got my blue, royal blue, X3, Tamiya paint, all mixed up. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Oh, not bad. We are at 22 PSI. Might be too high, but let's see. Not bad, it goes on pretty good. Let's uh, lower this a little bit. All right, let's see what that is. We're just at 20 there. Now let's see if we can put this on in one coat. It's kind of comfortable. Getting the uh, job done, as we say. Went on good, atomized it pretty good. Not great. It's settling in. It looks pretty good. All right, let's try it over a piece, a model piece. This is still on the runner. I took a uh, from an old aircraft model, so let's see how it it will do on that. It's kind of comfortable. I cannot complain there. This is the point three. We'll see how this dries, if it gives us a nice coating when it dries. All right, we'll let that sit. It covered pretty good. Kind of impressed. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to see how uh, finely we can do this. Now, let's turn down the MAC valve. Can you see it? It's just shooting some paint out now. Got to get it so something's coming out. All right, let's see how we can close we can get. It's a little trickier with the trigger to get fine details. Nope, still too. Let's try something. I'm going to lock in. Let's turn this up, actually, but shorten the needle throw. Here we go. Let's see what we get. Not too bad. I'd like to go in even further. There we go. That's not bad. Look at that. I am going right up against the cardboard. Now, sometimes the cap will interfere with that. Let's take the cap off. All right. Let's see what we get here. I'm just going to come right in. Oh, big difference with the cap off, guys. Can you see it? Look at that. That is a pencil line if you can, camera's picking up on that. I'll pull it out and then we're going to come in. Watch this. Yeah. Or I can go across, close, and then pull out. But at some point it just gives up because I have the Mac valve in this adjusted. Let's go full air on. All right now, let's see if I can control it. Let's open up this. All right. Look at that. Now let's see if we can still do what it was doing, just using feel. Oh yeah, I like this better too. You can get control using your own hand at this point. I'm no artist, I just paint models, but these fine lines do come in handy. You do, it does all right. It does all right, guys. It's not bad at all. And then you pull her out. That's as big as the line you're going to get with a point three. Still not bad. I mean, I did those parts in the spoon, right? 
but then you come in, just go real light, and here you go, and you're getting little lines. Not the greatest lines, I mean, we're not talking Micron or a GSI Custom, but for the cost, not bad. Very good. All right. I'm going to put this on because I want to clean this out. We're going to cover up the front and do a backwash. And, uh, all right, let me pause this and clean it out. I will show you cleaning it out. Uh, maybe in the next one, I'll do it in the booth. But let me get this changed out to a 0.5 and move on with the test. All right, guys, I switched out the needle to the 0.5 millimeter, and uh, we're going to use my anodized violet metallic number one, Mecha Empire. So let's go ahead, start off with a spoon. Hold on, something on this spoon, there we go. Blow it off, just pull a little bit and you get the air. We'll leave the valve alone on this one. Here we go. Oh, nice color. Always like this color. Look at that. It dries like a nice matte, semi-gloss, colored steel. Uh, goes on nice. Look at that. It does like that one, my enamel. All right, let's try it over uh, model piece. These things are like spring steel. I'm trying to stop them from bouncing for you guys. Yeah, that's a little better. I've left the compressor at... Uh, 20 psi and it looks to be very good for this needle wow it, it went on really nice it, it painted it pretty nice guys this is good for big pieces for sure I mean I did get the fine lines in but it's showing its true colors with these bigger pieces that was pretty good let's uh trying to get this so it doesn't make a mess all right let's try it on uh, fine lines I'm gonna see how we can do Let's take the cap off again, and let's see what we can get with the 0.5. I want to test this out. Oh man, it might even be better. Look at that, guys. This is even better. It's not as fuzzy. It really likes this 0.5 a lot better. It's tough to do behind the camera here. I'm trying to get it so you guys can see and get this done properly not too shabby that is pretty good guys it's not fuzzy at all if it is it's because it's spreading in the paper I'm trying to get as fine as I can it's tricky with the camera let's see how wide we can get it and how far in we can come Wow, look up. You know, I don't even know what the point eight is going to do, but look at this. We're going to cover a lot of ground here. <laughs> and it's not really blowing through it. It's still in the cup. Wow. I'm doing that on purpose. I'm trying to see if I can flood it. It's really not even spider wet. It's not doing anything. It's really just how close we can get. There we go take your time you can really get her down there look at that and look how wide it sprayed so you're getting that and that with the 0.5 pretty impressive that's uh that's pretty impressive let's see what it looks like over black plastic while we have some of this in here and then we try the uh, 0.8 and we do uh we're gonna prime that car Great color. There we go. You know, I pulled the needle out, guys, and it cleaned really nice. I'll pull the last needle out. We'll see, and I'll show you that at the bench. And I'll save that for last. All right, guys, let me clean it out, switch up to the point eight. We'll prime that car, and we'll go over the results. All right, guys, here we are back at the booth. I got my F40 Ferrari. A little lightly sanded down. 
I'm going to hit it with the anti-static Tamiya brush. I'm not going to be a fanatic about this. It's not like the BMW, which is a very special kit to me. I have about six or seven of these kits I keep in stock just for testing. And that's what we're going to be doing here. All right. Now, I'm going to use Stano Res. It's pretty thick. However, no thinning necessary. I've never been able to do that. And I'm guessing I'm going to give it a shot with this big needle airbrush because maybe it'll work. It's, it's not super thick. You can see on a, on a strong performing airbrush, it should be able to push it through. I've done it on one of my larger Badger Patriots, but a couple of drops are thinner and it comes out beautiful. But I'm going to try it just like it says. I've already shaken it up. We're going to try it straight into the airbrush. I already changed the needle to the 0.8. So we are expecting much here quite a bit. Let's see if it does it before I put too much in it. Son of a gun, it is pushing it through like nothing. So then we're going to go ahead and fill her up. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see how it performs priming this car. Now, I normally would have uh, gone a little more finesse. Don't worry about my hands because this is an acrylic. It comes right off with my orange hand cleaner. And this stuff looks weird going on, but boy, I'll tell you, it dries really good. It does dry really nice. Now, this is over red. So, uh, compressor's on. So, um, in a real world, this would take a few coats for sure. Then again, if I'm painting it red, it might not matter too much. Oh, what is this? Something flew out. Look at that. I wonder if there was a chunk in there. I should have strained it. Oh, well. It does spray it really, it, it pushes it through. I think you get better performance if you thin it a little bit. I might even do that in a second. Oh, let's get the back here, hold on. I'm not gonna get every nook and cranny here. I just wanna test the airbrush quick. But it does push it through without thinning it. I personally would thin it, you can stretch the bottle and get your money's worth anyway. You know. Then you can sand this down. This sand's really good and put another coat. That's what I think we would normally do for that spot we got right there. It must have been something and must have had a chunk in it somewhere. Let's see if we can get in this little crevice here. Not bad. Yeah, that's good. I mean it does. It can push it through. It'll prime a car easily. Next time I'll thin it. Let's try it on a aircraft wing and see what that does. I have this here. I left it on the runner just to see what we can get here. I'm using like a spray gun at this point. Yeah, this covers a lot of space. Now, I'm going to use this and my clear test I got coming up later in the week. And um, that's why I wanted to do the brush test first, the airbrush, and see what we get. All right, we'll put this under the dehydrator. Now let's try one more thing. Let's see how fine we can get this to spray. <laughs> let's take this cap off like we did for the others. There we go. All right. Now it is primer, so it's, hey, you know what? I can get in there pretty good. That is not bad, man. It has some control to it. Look at that. Let's see how wide we can get it to spray. Yeah, this is definitely 
Oh, we ran out. Hold on. Hold on, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. I actually refilled it and thinned it a little bit to see if we get different performance, you know? Oh, yeah, that spray's really wide. Look at that. Yeah, that's uh, tremendous. That'll really get a job done quick. Let's get this out of the way. This is going to go dry. And let's try and see how we can put it over black. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Here come. Wow. It, uh, it definitely gets the job done. Let's try it over the white spoon. Now when I want to prep for a job for a big paint test, when these guys see me when I paint like 20 colors, I will definitely load this up and get my 20 colors and get my 20 spoons primed. That's it. Alright guys, I'll have this stuff dry out. I'll meet you back at the bench. And I'll show you how it looks when we tear it apart. Alright guys, before we go with the reveal on how the paint came out, I'm going to show you, uh, I flushed it out quick. They recommend the back flush. So you go here, now you pull all the way back, it's going to go flying out. And uh, you got to go real gentle, a couple of back flushes. And I'm going to show you the needle now, how it comes out. And uh came out pretty clean for both of them. Now this is... For the primer, so it's gonna be hard to see. Let's see. No, it's pretty good. Now, here's how we're really gonna determine it. We're going to get a paper towel. One second, guys, as I lean over, I'm gonna put some acetone on this. There it is. Now let's see how bad it is. There it is. Yeah, there's some on there. Now that's typical with my uh each night that I do this. Now I did buff this with the flits off camera yeah I got them all done and then I put the uh, badger needle juice over it say it three times so and uh, looks like it comes clean really good yep that's it for that and that's it now the only other sticky point I will say is the cap gets really dirty and uh, I actually performed I think it performed better with this uh, the little cap on the front the main cap taken off and uh, let me show you how dirty this thing gets. Let me get a Q-tip. You can see it there. See all the gray in it? So let's put uh, some acetone or lacquer on that. And uh, look. So not that it's a big deal. It's just a cap. But it gets excessively dirty compared to my other airbrushes. So, But that's that. Everything else, eh, pretty good. I, I pulled out the nozzles and changed them. And they were clean. And um, here's what I recommend you clean them out with. Go with this point three here. Make sure you label everything. I put a point five and put everything in here. All right, put the needle on top of it so I wouldn't get that messed up. But here's the point three, and you dip this in some acetone or some lacquer thinner, or if it's uh, an acrylic, you accordingly and go right in there. See that? And you just swirl it around. These are uh, for my CVS. These are little dental brushes. They got them also at Walmart. They're great. They get in here and you can clean everything out. I, I do love these things. And uh, that's it. A little acetone or whatever. And you got it all cleaned out. It's ready to go. So that's it. Now the performance, uh, actually pretty good. Uh, kind of shocked. Let's uh, put this needle back. And I will go ahead and get the results for you guys. All right, here we go. Let me go get the painted bits and we'll go over that and wrap this up all right guys here we go let's get some of this stuff out of the way get the needle out of the way there here we go get the needle juice out of the way all right here's the first thing we did which was Tamiya X3 is it royal blue royal blue look at that it's smooth it went on good I mean really smooth here it is over the aircraft piece it looks rough, but it's a really real old model, and it was kind of rough to start with. I mean, this is like a 30-year-old kid, I think. 
but it covers nice really good and this is how fine I got it to go once I took the little little cap off the front I got in close and uh, not bad I mean not bad a lot of the cheaper airbrushes you, you can't get this it doesn't atomize the paint good enough to get it like that you know but uh, look at that uh, held its own it held its own all right hold on let me pause the camera and I'll get you the uh, the five the point five millimeter needle all right next up is my Mecca Empire in it eyes violet enamel good stuff you ready for this look at that beautiful this is over black and this is it over the same aircraft kit look at that great color for uh, Gundam look at that love this lineup it's the first lineup I released was my anodized colors it's a 10 piece set and you can buy them individually too and uh, uh, these are dear to my heart because it's the first idea I came up with for colors anodized metals and uh, look at it. it the the point five through this brush really liked my enamels I mean you could just the results speak for themselves is that beautiful go grab this guys I highly recommend my own paint go figure now here it is the point five and it covered look at that look at how smooth it sprayed this on this is the magic needle this I think this was the one this seemed to do it all because look how great this coverage was and then look at how fine I got it I mean really good really good results now let's move on to the point eight hard to beat this though but that was good well I did the point eight for priming and then later in the week we're gonna do it on the clear coat which you see back here so let me go get the prime parts and wrap this up all right, guys, here we go. I got the primered car. You see shades of red. I didn't go crazy. It took it would take two coats to get out rid of that. But this was just to see how good it put on the primer. I tell you, this stuff dries phenomenal, and it did. Look at how good this thing dried. Look at how great this primer really is. It's just smooth. Except for this dot over here that came out. And that's not the, the gun's fault. I think it was in the paint. See it? And I would normally sand that down and hit it again. That, that has nothing to do with the brush, I believe. However, a point eight to push that out, that'll tell you how big the needle is. That's a big dot that came out. Could have been in the in the, the nozzle protector, because remember I said it was getting caked up, maybe it flew out. That's why I, I would recommend not using it at all. But look how great it, it primed this kit. In the wing, I guess there's no, you know, no sense in showing that. It's the same as the car. So, um, let's get this on the stand. Uh, pretty good. A little more impressive than I thought. Here is the point eight, And even then I got some lines to lay down. Not as dark as intended, but here it is. Just laid it down to show you how it goes on like a spray can, practically. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, particularly the point five, I liked. And, um, even the point three, I mean, it worked. It just worked. It worked well, much better than I thought. I think the Mac valve is more of a gimmick, particularly on these lower-priced airbrushes. More of a gimmick, I think. I would just leave it open all the time and just use your own air for adjusting. Um, uh, pretty good. A pretty good airbrush. You're getting three needles, three nozzles, three cup sizes, the hose, and uh, a couple other things. Different attachments for the how you're going to put the hose on if you don't want to use theirs and you have your own already hooked up. Um, it uh, not bad I'll put a link below if you guys are interested in it um, you could do a lot worse and of course you could do a lot better um, upcoming I do have a couple of nice uh, airbrushes I'm gonna be testing and some haven't arrived yet I'm gonna be testing uh, a couple of side feeds I'm gonna, I got a Sparmax on the way in I'm gonna try and test a Hansa I'm gonna test another Sparmax another side feed this just showed up and this could be a a really good I'm hearing good things on this uh, portable uses a hose it starts and stops like the no name it's got an airbrush included with it and uh, I went over the airbrush and it is a pretty high quality airbrush that comes with it 
Uh, we don't know until we spray it. Detachable, rechargeable battery. Um, this test will be coming up hopefully within a week because I'm curious myself as uh, this looks like a nice little kit. This looks like a nice kit. And uh, I also have, hold on, this really inexpensive, same, kind of like this idea, even cheaper, but again, a lot of accessories thrown in, um, a good looking airbrush for a cheap one, look at that, it's got the Mac valve, which I'm not crazy about, but it looks even better than that Mac valve, to tell you the truth, and again, it's got all the attachments for the bottom, for hooking it up, and it's modular in a different way, see it? where you put this in so you can match the type of hose you want to put it on. Look at this. It comes with a moisture trap to fit into the bottom. A quick release. Two, three, what, three cup sizes, and I'm talking real big cup sizes here. Uh, an extra needle. I don't know what size this is. A point two, A point five. I'm not even sure what's in it. I have to see what came with it in it. So uh, look at this. An airbrush cleaning kit. So this is in the $30 range? I, I don't know, but it's, it's, it came with so much that I have to test it for you guys. I just, I just got to see how it is. Anyway, guys, that is the video. Um, on my Patreon, somebody joined and asked what this looks like painted over this. And I shot that video just for him, and that's what I'm doing with my Patreon. I'm doing requests. Hey, buddy, what does your purple anodized look like sprayed over this gray? I'll test it for you on video form and post it on the Patreon. I'm taking video requests. And um, and just your joining hold on, helps the channel quite a bit. Helps me with my have to ship out a product or buy new products for the channel. And the um, channel doesn't make that much money. And that helps along the way. I want to keep the channel going. It's been uh, a fun ride for you guys. I've been enjoying doing this stuff. And um, so I'll put a link below for my Patreon if you guys want to join. It's very cheap. And like I said, I'll take any request and I'll post the request in video form when I answer you. Don't forget, my panel liners have been restocked at Gundam Pros. And uh, don't forget, I have my enamel lineup of paintable, instead of being panel liners, neon paints also. And while you're there, check out my regular lineup of Mecha Empire enamels. As you've seen, these are beautiful paints just beautiful paints anyway guys thanks for sticking around it was a long video but i did want to test each needle all kinds of colors and we did that and it is not that bad i'll put a link below for that and everything else i talked about including my uh tamiya anti-static brush we'll put that up there too anyway guys thanks for sticking around we'll see you very soon i got another video coming up soon we're going to do this diamond clear next i had to wait for the thinner to come in it came in in a separate order i gotta thin it a little bit for uh for you guys, we're gonna put it through an airbrush and we're also gonna test it with the fat needle here too. So we'll try it both ways. Anyway guys, that is the video. Thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in the next video.